Yeah, I'm audible, na? Yes, sir. Jane has left. Okay. Mm, yes, sir. Uh, I hope you will be able to see my PPT. Yes, sir. Are you able to see my PPT? Yes, sir. <laughs> mm. Okay, just to have a recap of what we have discussed in the previous class. Uh, yes, sir. Manasa. Manasa is such. Yes, sir. Yeah, can you just define what is the input signal to noise ratio? Yes, quickly. I defined, uh, I think, four terms. One is input SNR, second one is output SNR, third one is channel SNR, and fourth one is the figure of merit. So these four definitions should be there in your mind. Yes, Manasa, are you aware or not? I am not able to hear your voice. Can you just speak loudly? Hello? Hello? Yes, Manasa. Manasa? Yes, sir. Yeah. Are you able to define what is input SNR? Sir, I forgot, sir. Yes, what about Vadva? Vadva. Yes, sir. Yeah, can you define yes, sir. What, is, what is input SNR? Sir, I'm not able to hear you properly, sir. I'll join back in two minutes. Okay, ma'am, okay. What about Akshay? Yes, sir. Are you able to hear your voice? Yes, sir, I'm able to hear. Yeah, can you just define what is input SNR? Sir, input SNR is the ratio of uh, average power of modulating signal to modulating? average power of noise at input. Okay. Now, is it modulating signal or modulated signal? Modulating signal. No, no. See, modulating signal is different and modulated signal is different. Uh, no, yeah. sir. Input is modulated signal ah. at the... Output is demodulated. Yeah. No, the understanding is modulating means it is a message signal. Okay. Modulated means it is a modulated signal. Okay. Means carrier and message signal are multiplied, right? Then we'll get the modulated signal. So we define the input signal to noise ratio at the input of the detector or demodulator, what we can say. Okay. So as you said, it is the ratio of average power of the modulated signal to the average noise power. Okay, very good. Then uh, <coughs> what about Thipana? Can you define what is output SNR? Yes, yes. Yeah. Average power of modulated signal by average power of noise at the output, sir. No, no. At the output, how you will get again modulated signal, man? See, at the output of the detector, you will get demodulated signal, no? Yes, sir. Uh, then, so it is the average power of the demodulated signal okay, to the average power of the noise. That is the filter noise, right? Yeah. Then what about Ashtata? Can you define what is channel signal to noise ratio? Ashtata. Yes, Ashtata. Yes, yeah. Uh, channel SNR is uh, ratio of uh, average yeah. power of modulated signal yeah. to the average power of noise in message bandwidth. Uh, that is at the receiver input, right? Uh, receiver input. Okay. Good. Uh, so what about uh, Anand? Can you define what is figure of merit? Anand? Yeah. 
इस आनंद फिगर ऑफ मेरिट कैन यू डिफाइन फिगर ऑफ मेरिट मैन सर नो सर नो वट अबाउट सो वी क्राई सो वी क्राई Yes, yes. Sovik Rai. Yeah. Yes, I'm asking you to define figure of merit. Yes. Say, will you be able to define or not? No, sir. No. Mm, then. so with blank mind it will not help okay you people should revise what has been taught in the previous class then only you will be able to understand further class lectures hmm? see when you people don't know what is the basic definitions then what you people will understand today yes uh, bhargav bhargav no but yes what about manish Manish, so at the beginning of the class, only are not responding. Hmm? Okay, Manjunath. Sir. Ah, uh, can you define what is figure of merit, man? Ah, uh, I don't remember, sir. You don't remember. Hmm. At least, if you have understood, you would have told, na? Sir, it's a ratio of. Uh, yeah. Uh, Power of channel to the uh, noise, sir. No, no, no. Yes, what about Manoj? Manoj. Yes, sir. Yeah, can you define what is figure of merit? No, sir, I don't remember. You don't remember. Hmm. What about Manusri? Yes, Manusri. Ah, uh, sir, I don't remember, sir. Yes, Manusri is not there. Yeah. Ah, uh, even I don't remember, sir. You don't remember. Okay, all happy. Did you already mark it? What did you order? Did you register? Hmm? Why you want to remember the definitions, right? Only God Sir should remember the definitions, because I am teaching PCS. Hello. Hmm. So the figure of merit is the ratio of output SNR to the channel SNR. Okay. So figure of merit based on the value of figure of merit, we say the Uh, which demodulator is better? Okay, If the ideal value of uh, figure of merit should be one. Means the output SNR should be equal to channel signal to noise ratio. Okay. Uh, desired one is it should be greater than one. Means always output SNR should be greater than the channel signal to noise ratio. The permissible value is one. <coughs> That is when output SNR is equal to channel signal to noise ratio it is okay. But less than one, if the figure of merit is less than one, then we say the performance of the receiver is deteriorated. That means output SNR will be less than the channel signal to noise ratio. That means the noise will be more compared to the signal. So I think all these things I have discussed in the previous class, and even I started discussing about the noise in DSBC receivers also. Okay, so people's uh, memory is very very poor. Uh, i don't think you people will be noting the points what i discuss neither you are noting nor you are uh, going through my video what i feel okay by hearing your response so this will not help you people should work hard okay okay so let us uh, just uh, i don't want to yeah this is what i said figure of merit is the ratio of output snr to channel signal to noise ratio so nicely i made the ppt and i am sharing all these things but still people don't read 
I said when figure of minute is greater than one, right? It is the uh, desired one. I said uh, when it is one, it is permissible. When it is less than one, we say the performance of the receiver will not be that good. Okay. I said it depends on what type of modulation we use. So let us try to find out for different types of receivers what will be the figure of merit. Okay. So this is the <coughs> model of the double sideband suppressive carrier receiver using coherent detection okay we already discussed this uh, block diagram uh, i said uh, the input to the receiver will be what dsbac modulated signal and we add noise will be added at the channel right then at the receiver side right so these two will be given to the bandpass filter so what is bandpass filter will do it will fill it will try to filter the noise okay and it will try to amplify the received signal also because it will be very weak signal so this x of t will have the combination or sum of the modulated signal and the noise that noise we call it as a filtered noise so that is n of t so x of t will be equal to s of t plus n of t we say so s of t is the modulated signal and n of t is the narrow band noise we say right so that is given as input to the product modulator so another input to the product modulator is about local oscillator here i am considering the magnitude of the carrier local oscillator will be unity right so x of t into cosine of 2 pi fct that will give you the value of v of t that is output of the product modulator right then i apply that to the low pass filter so output of the low pass filter will be the desired demodulated signal. Okay, so this complete thing is the coherent detector. Already we have discussed this uh, type of block diagram in the previous classes, right? So let us now see uh, mathematically how do we represent the DSBAC modulated signal? Already that also we know. Then uh, already said uh, how do we represent the filtered noise? Okay, so with mathematical uh, this one, let us try to understand finding input SNR, output SNR, channel SNR, and then figure of merit for this DSBAC receiver. <coughs> yes, as yes, the first thing, so we can represent the DSBAC signal, right, at the field, means in the filtered signal X of T, that is output of the bandpass filter, will be like this, that is uh, AC cosine of 2 pi of CT into M of T. I said C is the system dependent scaling factor, right? And uh, this AC into cosine of 2 pi of CT, is a carrier signal and m of t is a message signal okay right so and we assume that m of t is the sample function of the stationary process having a zero mean and uh, its power spectral density will be limited to a maximum frequency of w hertz okay right so where w is i said message bandwidth and then we are going to calculate what is the average power of that message signal Okay, so the average power of the message signal is the what? The total area under the cover is or under the cover of the power spectral density of the message signal. So, so we can write it as the average power is equal to integral from minus w to w because the power spectral density of the message signal lies within this frequency. Okay, is m of f into d of v is Okay, and I said carrier wave is statistically independent of the message signal. And here I have shown the yeah, uh, so this is the uh, mathematical uh, expression for DSBC signal and this one is the expression for finding the total or uh, average power of the message signal, okay, P is equal to what? Then, so I can write uh, the average power of the modulated signal, okay. average power of the DSBC modulated signal will be what? Uh, because uh, this is a DSPC signal, right? This is a DSPC signal. So how do you find the average power? C, C square, right? Then uh, this AC cosine of 2 pi FCT, its average power will be AC by root 2 whole square. So with that, I will be getting A square C by 2. Okay, then M of T, its average power will be denoted as P. So with that, I can say the average power of the modulated signal as C squared into a square c by 2 into p okay yes uh, is this clear 
AC into cosine of 2 pi FCT, its average power will be. So, what we take VRMS is equal to what? Vm by root 2, right? Yes or no? So, in that the peak voltage. So, we say AC by root 2 whole square that will give you the value of uh, this one, right? So, with that I can say C square into A square C into A square C by 2 into P will be the average power of the modulated signal. So, similar to that, I can find out what is the uh, average power of the noise. So, I know what is the noise spectral density, right? So, it will be having a value of N0 by 2 and the average noise power in the message bandwidth W will be equal to W into N0, okay? So, the ratio of these two factors will give you the channel signal to noise ratio. That is what I have written here. The channel signal to noise ratio of the DSBC receiver will be equal to what average power of the modulated signal to the average power of the noise. So, average power of the noise will be what? WN0. And average power of the modulated signal will be what? C squared A square C by 2 into P. So, that is what is written here. Okay. So, this is the important uh, uh, <coughs> relation what I can say. Okay. The channel signal to noise ratio. Similarly, I need to find out what is the output SNR. Then I can find out what is the figure of merit. Right. So, to find the output SNR, what that will be done at the output of the receiver, right? So, for that, so to determine the output signal to noise ratio, right, I will be representing the filtered noise in the form of what? That is the narrow band noise, right? So, I can write X of T, that is, this is the output of the band pass filter, which is equal to S of T plus N of T. So, I know what is S of T? S of T is what? C A C cosine of 2 pi F C T into M of T, right? This is my S of T and N of T, that is the narrow band noise. I can express that in terms of in phase and quarter surface phase components. So N I of T, right, cosine of 2 pi F C T minus N Q of T sine of 2 pi F C T. This already we have discussed. How do we represent the narrow band noise in terms of in phase and quarter surface phase components, right? So just I substitute the value of S of T and N of T here. Now as I said, this in phase and quadrature phase components, okay, are uh, written with respect to carrier, right? So, the output of the product modulator, right, of the coherent detector, that is what V of T, right, output of the product modulator component of the coherent detector. Means with respect to if you see the block diagram, you will understand here what is V of T. So, this is V of T, right? So, this V of T will be equal to what? X of T into cosine of 2 pi of CT. So, that I am writing it there. Okay. So, V of T is equal to X of T into cosine of 2 pi of CT. So, this is my X of T. So, for this equation, I am multiplying it by cosine of 2 pi of CT. If I do that, right, if I multiply this equation, right, by cos by FCT. So, what I will get is a first term C A C cos square 2 by FCT into M of T. Okay. So, here one step is skipped. You can write that. Then N I of T cos square 2 by FCT minus N Q of T sin 2 by FCT into cos 2 by FCT. So, I can write uh, this cos square 2 by FCT as what? 1 plus cos uh, 2 theta by 2. Right. So, with that and even here also second term also n i of t into cos square 2 by f c t can be written as this cos square 2 by f c t can be written as 1 plus cos 2 theta by 2. So, with that I am simplifying and bringing it common. So, 1 by 2 c a c m of t plus 1 by 2 n i of t, okay, taking the common term then 1 by 2 of this c a c m of t plus n i of t into cos 4 by f c t, okay, because cos 2 theta by 2 means cos 4 by f c t by 2. So, with that. Then next one is uh, NQ of T sin 2 pi of CT into cos 2 pi of CT. This can be written as that is a sin theta, uh, cos theta can be written as what? Sin 2 theta by 2. So, with that I can write 1 by 2 AC NQ of T sin 4 pi of CT. Okay. So, this is what V of T means this is the output of the product modulator. This time I am applying it to the low pass filter. So, when I apply this to the low pass filter, what it will do? it will be eliminating this component, right? The component which is there at uh, uh, 2 FC, right? So, only I will be getting the first two terms. That is why I written 
output of the low pass filter in the core and detector as what y of t is equal to 1 by 2 c a c m of t plus 1 by 2 n i of t. So this is my output of the uh, low pass filter in the DSBC receiver. So looking at this equation, what I can say is, uh, that as I said, this is my output, right? So the message signal, right? The message signal M of T is there here, right? So this is the desired signal, right? M of T along with that, some constant is there. This is a scaling factor, what I can say, okay? Uh, right, so and here I have an in phase uh, noise component, in phase filter noise component, and these two are added. Message signal is scaling factor plus the in phase component of the noise will be additive at the output of the demodulator. If you take any demodulator, output of the demodulator will have the message signal with scaling factor plus the in phase component. So, those two will be additive in nature. So, that is what I discussed. Okay, and here the potential component has been completely removed or rejected by the core and detector because there is no NQ of T in the expression, right? Fine. <coughs> so, uh, to find the output SNR, I need to find the average power of the demodulated message signal at the receiver output, right? So, at the receiver output, uh, what I am having that this is my receiver output, right? Y of t. Y of t is my receiver output. So, how do I find the average power of this? So, c, right? A square c, m of t, its average power will be p, right? So, p yeah, by 2, 2 is there 2. So that is why I am writing here the average power of the message signal component at the output of the receiver will be this c, a c, m of t by 2, okay? Its average power will be c square okay a square c by 2 m of t that will be p right already 2 is there that is why it has become 4 okay so c square a square c uh, p by 4 is the uh, average uh, power of the message component at the receiver output okay yes uh, is this clear c a square c by 2 p right by 2 is there so it becomes by 4 c square a square c p by 4 will give you the average power of the message component of the receiver output okay so <coughs> then to find the output snr i need to find out the average power of the demodulated message signal at the receiver output so that is what that is my this one that is c squared a square c p by by 4 then i need to find out what is the average noise power in a message bandwidth right so the bandpass filter, right? So it is having a bandwidth of Vt and its bandwidth will be equal to 2W, right? So in that, what I can say is the average power of the filtered noise will be what? 2W and not, right? So with that, uh, what I am getting at the output of the uh, detector will be what? Only the in-phase component, right? So the average power of the low pass in phase noise component will be same as that of the uh, filtered noise and optic, right? So with that, uh, I can find out what is the average power of the noise at the receiver output. So which is equal to 1 by 2 whole squared into 2 WN0, <coughs> right? So it becomes 1 by 4 into 2 WN0. So this uh, 2 ones are 2 twos are, so it becomes 1 by 2 WN0 will be the average power of the noise at the receiver output. So now I know what is the average power of the noise at the receiver output and I know what is the average power of the demodulated message signal. So then I can find what is the output SNR, the okay, output signal to noise ratio of the DSBAC receiver using core and detection, so which is equal to what? So output SNR, that is what? C squared A square C P by 4, right? This is the value of average uh, power of the demodulated message signal at the receiver output and 1 by 2 into WN0, that will be the what? Average power of the noise at the receiver output. So with this, uh, I think 2 ones are 2 twos are right. So what I will get? So C squared A square C P by 2 into WN0 will give you the output SNR. Okay. So now I found the output SNR. 
So then finding the figure of merit is what? So it is a ratio of figure of merit is a ratio of what? Output SNR to the channel signal to noise ratio. Means already found what is the channel signal to noise ratio, right? So then I can substitute those two here. Okay. So you can substitute those two. That is equation as per year it is 6.9, right? That divided by the channel signal to noise ratio. Channel signal to noise ratio I shown in the previous slide. Yeah. Right, this is a channel signal to noise ratio. That is C squared, A square C, P divided by 2 W N naught. So here, output SNR and as well as channel SNR is same. Right, that is why we say the figure of merit will be 1 for this DSBAC receiver. I think you can substitute and say I would, it will be 1. Okay. Yes, substituting the value of output SNR and channel signal to noise ratio. Since both are same, we say the figure of merit for the DSB AC receiver will be equal to 1. Okay. And here what you have said is, uh, yeah, so DSB AC modulation, we all know uh, the message signal will be shifted to what? It will be shifted to plus or, F, plus or minus FC, right? So the translated signal sidebands will sum coherently because we say upper sideband and lower sideband, that is FC plus FM, another one is FC minus FM. But uh, what about the noise? Noise will translate incoherently, we say. Means the uh, quarter component has been eliminated, right? In the expression of Y of T. So what we have observed here is the quarter component has been eliminated. Only the in phase component was there. That is why we say the it is in current. Okay. So this is all about DSBC receiver. So they will ask you to do, it will be asked for 10 marks or sometimes 8 marks. So what you are supposed to do is uh, you need to write the uh, yeah, block diagram of uh, the DSBC receiver. Okay. So you don't have to confuse with the, the receiver what we have discussed earlier. Okay. There we were not talking about uh, noise and all right so here especially you have to write the white noise okay at the input side then clearly should define what is bandpass filter what is the output of that this out x of t will be having what then the rest of the things so we you need to represent clearly the bandpass filter output is what then how do we find the average power of the message signal then channel signal to noise ratio then output snr Okay, so to find the output SNR, we need to find first what is the output of the detector, right? So by writing these expressions, you should be able to say what is Y of T. Then based on this, we will be able to find out what is the uh, output SNR. That is, we will be able to find out the output, uh, that is average power of the demodulated message signal and as well as the out average power of the noise at the detector output. Then uh, after finding output SNR, then you can say what is the uh, figure of merit. Okay. So if you write this much, you'll be able to get eight marks. If you have any questions, you can ask me, otherwise I will proceed further. Yes, the student should respond. If you don't have any questions, then I will move further. Or if you have any doubts, you can ask me right now. Yes? Is this clear everything? Shall I go to the next slide? That is next topic. Yes, sir. Okay. Okay, so first one is DSBC receiver is over. Then let us discuss now the noise in the AM receiver, that is standard AM. Okay, means it will have uh, two sidebands and as well as the carrier component, right? That is the AM. So this is the block diagram of the uh, AM receiver. So input is what? AM modulated signal. Again, we add noise. Okay, then output of bandpass filter will be S of T. So, which is equal to again this uh, A modulated signal plus noise. That is X of T will be equal to S of T plus N of T. 
So N of T is the bandpass filter noise. Then we use here envelope detector. So this is the difference compared to the previous uh, DSPC receiver. There we have used a coherent detector, right? So you know the coherent detector means what it will be having, right? So here envelope detector means what it will be having. So this envelope detector we use for the standard AM, right? So it will be having a diode and then RC low pass filter circuit, right? So then output of that will be the demodulated signal. So let us try to find out now what is X of T, then what is channel signal to noise ratio, then Y of T, then what is output SNR, and then what is the expression for figure of merit. Okay. Yeah. So I hope uh, you all have remembered how do we express the AM signal mathematically, right? So S of T will be equal to AC of 1 plus K M of T. Right, cosine of 2 pi FCT. So this is how we represent the standard AM signal. Right, it is the, the first model I have discussed. I hope you have remembered this. How do we represent the AM modulated signal mathematically? S of T is equal to AC of 1 plus K M of T cosine of 2 pi FCT. Right, in this AC cosine of 2 pi FCT is the what? Carrier signal and M of T is a message signal and what is this Ka is the constant that will determine the percentage of modulation. This also we are aware. Right? <coughs> okay, then let us now try to find out the average power of uh, this uh, modulated signal. How do we find the average power of this modulated signal? <coughs> and uh, Already we know what is the average power of the noise. So directly we can use that. So to find the average power of the carrier component, just to begin with. So carrier component in this is what? AC cosine of 2 pi FCT, right? See the carrier component is what? AC cosine of 2 pi FCT. How do you find the average power of this? I said AC by root 2 whole square that will give the average power of this carrier. Means it is A square C by 2, right? So that is what is written here. So average power of the carrier in the AM signal will be what? That is A square C by 2, okay? Then after finding the average power of the carrier, then, so this is the a square C by 2 will be the what? Average power of the carrier. Similarly, the average uh, power okay, of the message signal, information bearing signal means message signal. So, which is equal to what? That is AC K M of T into cosine of 2 pi of CT, right? So, M of T, this one, right? So, A square C, K square A, M of T, we represent by P. Then just cosine of 2 pi of CT, it will be 1 by root 2 whole square. So it is nothing but 1 by 2. So I can write it as A square C, A square A, P by 2. Okay, so this is the average power of the information bearing signal. Okay. So with that, uh, I can say what is the average power of the AM signal. The okay, average power of the AM signal will be this. I found what is the average power of the carrier I found what is the average power of the information bearing signal. By knowing those two, right? So with respect to the previous, this, this equation, right? I will be able to say what is the average power of the modulated signal, AM signal. So which is equal to what here? C A square C of 1 plus K square A P by 2, right? So this is the average power of the modulated signal, what I can say. Then already we know what is the average power of the noise, okay, in a message bandwidth of W, which is equal to WNR. So just I'm taking the ratio of these two, and I'm saying that is the channel signal to noise ratio. So channel signal to noise ratio is the what? It is the ratio of average power of the modulated signal to the average power of the noise, right, in a message bandwidth W. So I'm writing a A square of 1 plus k square a p by 2 into wnr. So this is the expression for channel signal to noise ratio. Okay. Yes, is this clear? 
Yes, yes, yes there are, okay. Once uh, this is fine, so first job is we need to find out the channel signal to noise ratio. So after finding the channel signal to noise ratio, so we are interested in finding the output signal to noise ratio, right? That is output SNR. So if I find the output SNR, then I will be able to say what is the figure of merit for this, right? So to do that, uh, I need to write the expression for output of the bandpass filter, right? So that is equal to what x of t is equalized s of t plus n of t. Right? So this is the expression for out, the output of the bandpass filter. So just I am substituting the value of s of t and as well as n of t. What is s of t? I said uh, it is uh, what AC of 1 plus k a m of t plus n of 2 to fct. Right? This is my s of t. Right? That plus n of t. What is n of t? I represent n of t in terms of impedance and quarter surface component. Right? That is n i of t plus n of 2 to fct minus n q of t. Uh, sign of 2 pairs here. So that is what is written here. Okay. So since uh, here ni of t percent of 2 pairs is common, so I took ni of t also inside of that bracket. So ac plus ac k m of t plus ni of t right into percent of 2 pairs city minus nq of t into sign of 2 pairs city. Yes. Is this equation is clear? So this is the input to the envelope detector. Okay. So now, uh, yes, I hope you noted this equation. I think you need to write as it is S of D. Then you write N of T as it is. Then you take common thing and you can write. Why I wrote is this is the in phase component. Okay. Complete cos of something will be the in phase component, and uh, sign of something will be the quadrature component. So I am drawing the phase diagram of this. Keeping two things in mind, one is when uh, carrier to noise ratio is large, how do I write? When uh, carrier to noise ratio is low, how do I write? So first let us uh, think this one only, first one, okay, the phasor diagram. So uh, to draw the phasor diagram only, I wrote uh, this in this form, okay, AC of AC, AM of T plus NI of T, percent of 2 of CT, then this one, right, NQ of T, sin 2 of CT. So here, sir. So I am taking this as reference, right? So this is what AC of 1 plus KM of T, right? Uh, this is NI of T from here to here. And uh, see NI of T, entire thing is what? Cos of something, right? And cos and sin are what? 90 degree phase shift, right? So that is why I written N NQ of T perpendicular to this NI of T, right? So this is my NQ of T, okay, at this point. And uh, Okay, so I am uh, adding that. So this is my resultant y of t. Okay, so here I have written the expression for x of t, right? Yeah, so this is my x of t. That is the input to the envelope detector, right? So in this, what is envelope? How do we define the envelope? If I have something in terms of in phase and potential component, I have already discussed it. How do we represent? Means there are two ways to represent. No? One is in terms of in phase and potential component, another one is in terms of uh, phase and envelope or envelope and phase. So when I was discussing about that, the envelope of the signal will be square root of okay, n squared i of t plus n squared q of t. Okay. So I don't know how many of you have remembered. Oh, fine, if you don't remember also, not an issue, I can just uh, take that. So we can write, okay, from the phasor diagram, right? See, y of t is envelope of x of t. What is it, y of t? Here, the resultant, right? Resultant will be what envelope of x of t. So how do we define that envelope? Here it is defined. Envelope will be what? AC plus AC k m of t plus n i of t, that's square. Means something into cos is there, no? that will be squared. Plus something into sin is there, that will be squared. Then square root of that will give you the envelope of x of t. Okay. So this component AC plus AC k m of t plus n i of t, that square plus n squared q of t. Okay. Square root of that will be the envelope of x of t. Okay. That is the resultant component of y of t. Okay. So <coughs> 
what it says is this is signal y of t right is the what output of the ideal envelope detector okay y of t is the what output of the ideal envelope detector uh, and here what uh, it says is the x of t the phase of the x of t means uh, that is output of the bandpass filter right x of t the phase of that signal is not in we are not interested in phase of the signal that is why i am not writing the expression for phase i am writing only the expression for uh, envelope right okay so this expression y of t uh, is somewhat complex okay and we need to simplify this to do the simplification of that so what we do is uh, we take the means when the average okay, when the average carrier power is large compared with the average noise power okay when the average carrier power is large compared to the average noise power so the receiver will be operating satisfactorily right when the carrier power is larger than the noise power definitely we will be able to hear the message signal properly right in that case the signal term means which is associated with m of t that is what ac of 1 plus k m of t this term right this is associated with the message signal is large compared with the noise noise term that is ni of t and nq of t right so we can approximate the output of the envelope detector as this one ac plus ac k m of t into ni of t this is just approximation okay okay so i can approximate the output of the envelope detector as ac plus ac k m of t plus ni of t so this ac is a dc term okay this is due to the transmission of the carrier it appears right so we want only message signal right as i said in the previous also message signal at the output of the demodulator i will be having message signal along with the noise that is in case component of the noise so there is those two will be additive in nature i said right so that is what is here here okay so this approximation you have to tell when the ca average carrier power is large compared to the average noise power we can approximate the output of the envelope detector as this ac plus ac k m of t plus n i of t so now we can find out what is the output snr means by finding the what is the average power of the demodulated message signal and what is the average power of the noise in that right so already we know how to find the average power of this uh, demodulated message signal that is a square c right a squared a into p right that is the average uh, uh, power of the message signal a demodulated signal right so that is what is it a square c a squared a p by 2 right and this w n naught is the average power of the noise right so output snr will be what it is a ratio a ratio of average power of the demodulated signal at the receiver output to the average noise so this is what the output expression for output snr we get okay so this expression is valid under only two conditions means here we are putting the condition and we are because we have approximated y of t right so this is valid only when the average noise power is small right average noise power is small compared to the average carrier power at the envelope detector output right so based on that only we have approximated this equation right and second thing is the amplitude sensitivity that is ka okay is uh, adjusted for the percentage of modulation which is less than or equal to 100 percent okay under these two conditions we can approximate or write so this is approximation expression right so output snr will be what a square c k square d p by 2 w n r so now what will be the figure of merit the ratio of this to means the ratio of output snr to the ratio of channel signal to noise ratio so if you substitute those two equations then i can find what is the figure of merit so that is what is done here so output snr to channel signal to noise ratio that will give the figure of merit so okay i think uh, 
So this equation, okay, that is the equation 6.16 divided by uh, what is the expression for channel signal noise ratio? It is written. Yeah. So 6.12. Here also, what is there? A square of 1 plus A squared A P divided by 2 W L naught is there, right? So take this equation and output S N R. Right? So just see whether we will be able to simplify and say this is what is the figure of merit expression. So figure of merit will be approximated as k squared a into p divided by 1 plus and k squared a p. Just check, I think one step is left out here. Substitute the value of output SNR and substitute the value of channel SNR to that. So here what we can say is the figure of merit okay, of this uh, standard AM receiver will be less than 1. Okay, will be less than 1. Okay, because uh, we are not using a, an current detector. Okay, so using envelope detection, we say the figure of merit is always less than unity. This is important. Figure of merit of an AM receiver using envelope detection is always less than unity. So with this, what we can say is the noise performance of this AM receiver. Right, will be inferior, is always inferior to other receivers like DSVC receiver. Because in DSVC receiver, we found that the figure of merit will be equal to 1. But in case of uh, AM receiver using analog detector, we found that the, the figure of merit will be less than 1. Right? So, why it will be less than 1? Because uh, due to the wastage of uh, transmitter power that is uh, we transmit carrier also right so transmitting the carrier as a component of the am wave leads to wastage of the power so with that we say the performance of the receiver will be inferior compared to dsbc receiver okay so now let us consider one example quickly that is uh, let us have a single tone modulation so so far whatever is done keeping m of t is a general equation, right? So now I'm very specific. I'm saying, what is m of t, right? My m of t will be defining like this, that is am cosine of 2 pi fmt, okay? So where fm is the frequency of the message signal, am is the amplitude of the message signal. The message signal or modulating signal are all same, right? So I define m of t like this. Then how do I define s of t? So ac of one plus, so we all know this expression, right? mu is the modulation index and cosine of 2 pi fmt in the cos of 2 pi fct where mu will be equal to what k into am right so mu is the modulation index as i said then so we know how do how do we find the average power of the modulating signal so average power will be what am by root 2 whole square right so am by root 2 whole square means it will be a squared m by 2 right? so this is the average power of the message signal fine then once I find the average power of the message signal, then uh, <coughs> I can, means uh, I can substitute the expression for P in the previous, this one means here, see this is the expression for figure of merit, right? K squared A into P divided by 1 plus K squared A P. So I'm going to find out the value of P. It means I'm going to find out the average power of the message signal by considering the message is a sinusoidal signal. Then this is the example, right? So I said P is equal to what? A squared M by 2. So if I substitute that value in that expression, so the figure of merit will be 1 by 2 K squared A AM divided by this. Okay? And we know K into AM is the what? Mu. Right? So I can write 1 by 2 mu squared divided by 1 plus 1 by 2 mu squared, so which is nothing but mu squared divided by 2 plus mu squared. So this is the expression for figure of merit. Okay, so many times they will ask, derive or prove that the figure of merit for AM receiver will be this. Okay. 
Yes, many times this has appeared in the exam. Okay, figure of merit for the AM receiver. FOM I write, figure of merit. Okay, which is equal to mu square divided by 2 plus mu square. Okay, so what I wanted to convey here is when the mu is 1, means mu is 1 means 100% modulation, right? So during that time, what will be the value of figure of merit, which is equal to 1 by 3. Right, when the value of mu is 1, it will be 1 plus 1 divided by 2 plus 1. Means 1 by 3 it is. Means it is what? 33% only, right? And this also we have discussed uh, during the uh, first module, right? So, by using envelope detection, what we say? Means keeping other factors equal, right? Other factors being equal, an AM system that using envelope detection must transmit what three times right three times as much average power as the suppressed carrier system means when compared to dsbc receiver okay to achieve the same quality of noise performance okay so it should uh, transmit three times as much as the average power of the suppressed carrier system to achieve the same noise performance is what the understanding is. Hope this is clear. So here I consider this as a separate example, but in usually in exam, how do they frame the question is, they will ask you to prove that the figure of merit for AM receiver will be equal to this. What mu squared divided by two plus mu squared by considering sinusoidal message signal. So this is what you need to add. So till this, you can take it and write it as general expression. After that, you take message signal as a sinusoidal signal, find its average power, substitute in that equation, then say this is what the expression for figure of merit. Okay. Fine. So is that clear or do we have any doubts? Yes, my dear students should respond. Okay, so there is no point uh, people not respond. Assume that uh, no doubts. Okay. Fine, so uh, I have shown uh, the phasor diagram for uh, the assumption that when the carrier to noise ratio is too large, right? That is what the phasor diagram I have shown here. Uh, I think, yes. So this is a phasor diagram for which one I tick mark now. When it is, when the carrier to noise ratio is large, means carrier power is larger than the noise power. So this is the phasor diagram. Okay, we write uh, when the, what? Uh, uh, noise power is greater than the carrier power. Means when the carrier to noise ratio is small. Okay. So I, I will discuss with respect to this now. Okay. So this is a phasor diagram, what we are writing plus narrow band noise in case of low carrier to noise ratio. So as I said, we can express uh, in terms of envelope also. No? So I will come to that. I just have a note of this diagram. So here I am writing R of T, then there is angus I have to write, then this will be my AC of one plus KM of T and this will be my resultant. So in what way this phase diagram is different from this diagram, you should be able to uh, notify. Okay. In what way these two are different. Okay. Which one is the dominant factor here and which one is the dominant factor in this case, you should be able to tell. Fine. I hope uh, noted this point can take a screenshot of this and have it with you. I will come to that. So the next important thing is threshold effect. After understanding what is the figure of merit for an AM receiver, let us try to understand in brief what is threshold effect. Okay. So when the carrier to noise ratio is small, okay, compared with the unity, so the noise will dominate the performance and the performance of the envelope detector changes completely. Okay. When the carrier to noise ratio is small, means the carrier is less and noise is more, right? In that case, the noise will be dominating, isn't it? 
In that case, the performance of the analog detector will change us. Okay, so we can conveniently represent the narrow band noise n of t in terms of its envelope r of t and the phase psi of t. Even this type of expression also I discussed earlier. Okay, means how do we express noise? Uh, one way to express is in terms of in-phase and quarter phase component, right? Another way to represent narrow band noise is in terms of envelope and phase. So I am now considering the representation of narrow band noise in terms of envelope and phase. So I can write n of t is equal to r of t. This is my envelope and this is the phase. Okay, r of t into cosine of 2 pi of ct plus i of t. Okay, so I think I have drawn the phasor diagram with respect to this r of t on the x-axis, right? Fine. And if the angle, I get that ac plus of something, then resultant I have drawn. Okay. Just uh, let me, I think only one slide is there. Yes. I hope two minutes I will, will be able to spend. Just I will say what it is. Okay. So I think I discussed the... Uh, yeah. So what I want to say is uh, input to the detector, analog detector is what x of t, right? Which is equal to what x of t plus n of t. And uh, yeah, he's talking about the noise phasor diagram, right? So noise phasor r of t, right? Will be added with the phasor representing the signal term ac of 1 plus k m of t, right? With what angle? With the angle psi of t, right? So between the noise n of t and the carrier cosine of 2 pi of c t. So these things. Noise n of t and the carrier cosine of 2 pi of c t. So, if we refer that figure b, what we understand here is that is for what carrier to noise ratio is low, right? So, and carrier amplitude ac is small okay, compared to the noise envelope r of t. Okay, so with that, uh, we can express the output of the envelope detector as this. Y of t is approximated as R of t plus AC cosine of psi of t plus AC k m of t cosine of psi of t. So this is the output of the analog detector. In this, say so this is uh, only the message term is here in this component, right? The third one. Even that m of t is multiplied by other things also. That is cos psi of t is there. That is the phase of the noise. So what I wanted to say is here, what this relation reveals that the carrier to noise ratio is low, right? The detector output, the detector output, uh, means this y of t, right? Has no uh, strictly one component which is proportional to the message signal m of t. Okay, so I have a message component in the third term that is also associated with the phase of the noise, right? So that is what I'm telling here. The last term of the expression defining y of t contains message signal m of t multiplied by noise. But in earlier cases, means uh, for other things, it was additive. But here it is multiplicative. Right? So when the noise is multiplicated or multiplied by the message signal, then the noise will be more and uh, the original message signal component will be less. Right? So we will be able to hear only the noise, not the message signal. That is why we say the performance of the receiver will be weak. Okay, That is what I wanted to tell you. So how do we define the uh, threshold effect right so to define that so when we means we have a loss of the message in the envelope detector that operates at low carrier to noise ratio that is known as the threshold effect i think this is also many times they ask for two marks define threshold effect so you should be able to define this definition so with respect to that uh, phasor diagram and saying what happens how the noise will dominate compared to the message signal right so when noise is dominated i said we will be having a loss of information, complete loss of information at the output of the detector, right? So there will be no message signal at all, right? So the loss of this message in the analog detector that operates at low carrier to noise ratio, that is known as the threshold effect. Okay, so if we are operating below a threshold value, that is the threshold means what is the value of the carrier to noise ratio below which the noise performance of the detector will deteriorate much rapidly, right? Proportional to the carrier to noise ratio. Okay, I stop with just one minute. Yeah, that, that's what I wanted to say about this.
this will affect okay so it is very very important to recognize that every non linear detector means uh, non linear detector means analog detector okay we are using the diode as a non linear element right so that will exhibit the threshold effect fine so with this i can say the analysis of noise with respect to am and dsb ac receiver is over okay so last component is the fm i think uh, we'll take uh, that in the next class fine so just uh, wait for one minute i'll take the attendance so how come so many people have joined when i was in between uh, i was asking questions i could